Here's another show you can enjoy in the True Story FM family of entertainment podcasts. Hey, Pete, ever wonder what Steven Spielberg's favorite film is? You know, Andy, I've heard he loves classics like Lawrence of Arabia, Meet Me in St. Louis. Imagine chatting with him about why those films resonate with him so much. That's exactly what we do on our podcast, Movies We Like. We've had incredible guests like actress Dee Wallace, cinematographer Eric Messerschmidt, director Steve Miner, and former Disney animators Tom and Tony Bancroft. They share their favorite films and the impact they've had on their careers, offering fast Fascinating insights into the craftsmanship and storytelling techniques that make these movies so special. If you're curious about the magic behind the scenes, subscribe to Movies We Like from True Story FM on your favorite podcast app. New episodes are released on the fourth Monday of each month with early access for our members. Join us on Movies We Like as we explore the movies we all like with the people who make them. And Stephen, our people will call your people. Let's make this happen, puppy. Subscribe today. What's up, Most Excellent Friends? It's Chrissy and Nathan from the Most Excellent 80s Movies Podcast. It's a podcast where a filmmaker and a comedian and their most excellent guests adventure their way through the 80s movies we think we love or might have missed with our grown-up eyes to see how they hold up. Join us for delightful discussion. Rollicking recaps. Ratings and deep cut recommendations. Plus, members get some extra fun chit-chat with the hosts after the show. Download the most excellent 80s movies podcast today at truestory.fm. Or find it wherever the finest podcasts are stored. And do remember to keep the most excellent 80s movies podcast motto in mind. Be excellent to each other and... Party on. Party on, dudes. Dudes. Hello and welcome to this rebroadcast episode of Superhero Ethics. Friends, a couple of weeks before we went on hiatus, we were talking a lot about Batman and the Cape Crusader show. And we wanted to give you a throwback that because it wasn't that long ago that Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman and Bruce Wayne in Batman the Animated Series, many things that came off after that, that Kevin Conroy passed away. And it gave myself and Paul Hoppy and comic book fan extraordinaire Jessica Plummer a wonderful time to really talk about Kevin Conroy, his understanding of Batman, and what that lent to really everything we know about Batman from then on to today. The Cape Crusader show, as we talked about, really felt like it was set in a similar world to Batman the Animated Series. So this is a good time to go back and think about how is Kevin Conroy so important and how does that legacy live on? Please enjoy this episode. And if you like it, of course, please think about becoming a member. Only $5 a month, $55 a year. You get access to free content, bonus content at the end of episodes, and you get to help us keep the lights on. And whether or not you do that, please think about sending us some feedback. TikTok, Twitter, you can search for The Ethical Panda or just go on our website, uh, theethicalpanda.com, or just look in the show notes. Send us your thoughts on this episode or any episode we've, we've shared with you recently. We'd love to hear your thoughts. We'd love to share them and discuss them on an upcoming episode. Thank you so, so much. We have spoken. Hello, and welcome to this bonus episode of Superhero Ethics. If you've listened to many of our episodes, especially any that we talk about Batman, you know that Kevin Conroy was someone we truly cherished as one of, if not our favorite portrayal of Batman. Well, unfortunately, recently he passed away, and Paul and I decided to do a small mini episode just to kind of honor and tribute and talk about why his contributions to Batman have been so important. And we couldn't really do that without bringing in DC superfan uh, Jess Plummer, because I found this is the one time I can get her to say good things about a Batman portrayal. So, um, you know, even though Superman's great, too, today we're going to be talking about Batman and Kevin Conroy in this little mini episode. So thank you so much. And we'll be right back after this commercial break that I would like to be from Wayne Enterprises, but we'll see. Welcome back. This is Matthew, your host. I am joined, as almost always, by definitely not a host, Mr. Paul Hoppy. <laughs> Paul, how are we doing today? Um, yeah, I mean, overall, doing pretty good. You know, bummed on the, the current topic, of course. For sure. For sure. And Jess, as I said, you're recurring. I'm so glad you could be with us because I know this was a topic that uh, was really important to you. Yeah, yeah. I, I would echo Paul that I am I am real bummed. Very sad. I wish we didn't have to record it, but I'm glad I'm recording it with you too. For sure. Ditto. And so, Jess, let's start with you because I know we've joked about how Batman isn't your favorite. You're more a Superman woman, but that you really do uh, love all the DC stuff. And, you know, I know you mentioned that you were really affected by uh, Kevin Conroy's passing. So, talk a little bit about what this, what 
uh, his portrayal of Batman meant to you? Yeah, you know, it's funny because I I was surprised by how much it affected me. Um, like you said, I am definitely more of a Superman fan in general. Um, and honestly, like even though the uh, Batman the Animated Series, which was uh, Kevin Conroy's first time in the role, um, premiered in 1992 when I was math eight. <laughs> um <laughs> So he's basically been Batman my whole life. Like he's been Batman Mm. since I knew what Batman was, but I didn't actually like superheroes as a kid. And I was like, if I turned on the TV and it was a superhero cartoon, I'd be offended because to me, cartoons were about like, you know, somebody hitting somebody else in the face with a pie, um, (laughs) which, you know, wasn't really happening in Batman. I guess the Joker would do it, but it'd be a murder pie and it doesn't have the same (laughs) spirit. Um, Not not quite like a Sylvester and Tweety Bird. No, exactly. And so I'd always be like, ugh, and change the channel and go find DuckTales or something. But when I got into comics and superheroes um, in high school and college, it was really like Batman the Animated Series was, as it is for so many people, a jumping off point for me, even though, of course, it had been off the air for a very long time. Justice League was on the air, um, and that, you know, again, had Kevin Conroy as Batman. Um And I have since gone back and watched it. I was literally watching it like Thursday night and then checked Twitter on Friday morning and he had passed. Like, Mm. even though I didn't grow up with it, I still feel like I grew up with it because it was always there and he was always there. Um, Yeah, no, I, I, like I said, I was surprised by how much it affected me, um, but I, cried a lot may cry in this episode no promises <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a, it's an emotional topic paul what about for you because i know um i certainly remember the animated series being a big part of like my high school years i didn't watch it much myself at that point but a lot of my friends did uh, in our mutual friend circle it was talked about a lot were you watching it as it was coming out or do you not get into it later yeah i didn't really watch the animated series when it was out i was aware of it and you know, I might have seen a bit of it here and there. I actually grew up a, a Superman kid, you know. Um, the Su- Superman 1 and 2 came out either just before I was born, the first one, or like when I was very little. Um, you know, I mean, I <laughs> I had my hair done by uh, one of the, the, the village people's boyfriends <laughs> with like the little curl and everything when I was like four or five. Um, That's awesome. And like went to school in like a full like Superman outfit and <laughs> was um, and actually got to meet uh, got to meet Christopher Reeves um, when my dad worked on a, a movie with him, the Bostonians um, and, and played volleyball with him, actually, <laughs> which was really funny, <laughs> um, oh, which also then, you know, becomes a stat- sad story with um, how his life ended, um, mm-hmm. you know, too soon. Uh, I, <laughs> I could be talking about Christopher or my dad, actually, but um that sort of, you know, then Batman, the the movies with, um, you know, the Tim Burton movies with, with Michael Keaton came out. And that was kind of when I became more of a Batman fan. But it mm-hmm. wasn't really until like the 2000s that I started getting like really interested in it again. And um, it was it was the Justice League series, actually. Like I was aware of the animated series. Uh, but I, I didn't watch it regularly or anything. And then I just I watched the entirety of the Justice League series, probably in like two or three weeks or something, you know, mm-hmm. and it was just so good. And to me, um, you know, it's a combination. It's a combination of the writing and the voice acting. Right. Which I think anytime you get really like a just a, a peak level performance it always has to be some combination of those i think and sure. and so i think you know kevin conroy was was fortunate to get this role that was just really well written and you know he he was given kind of to me the batman who is like the best batman that there can be you know yeah but then for all of those you know my favorite moments of those to be on the level they were, it required his performance to like, to make it real, 
right? And yeah. um, somehow, you know, his Batman felt more real to me than any of the, you know, gritty live action takes that uh, many of which I love. But mm -hmm. there's just something uh, that feels so real, like, you know, human or just like a like a person, you know, and I mm -hmm. think he captured the the essence of both Bruce Wayne and Batman and really distinguished them with his voice. Right. Like you can tell whether this is Bruce Wayne or Batman speaking without looking at the screen. And right. I think that was something that he just did so well. And, um, you know, he just delivered so many fantastic lines, particularly as Batman, I'd say more than as Bruce. Um, but there's there's some more, you know, Bruce Wayne lines that I, I think were just fantastic. And and the way he differentiated those two, uh, I think, is like essential to the Batman character. And he does it in a way without going like full Christian Bale. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I, I want to talk about my own story with, with Batman, but I'll just say – and I've said this before on the on the show, but I think it's worth repeating. One of my favorite comments about Batman, and it, it, it comes from the, the folks at the DC On Screen podcast, and it's that unlike most superheroes, with Batman, Batman is who he is, and Bruce Wayne is the like persona that he puts on. But the core identity is Batman. And, and when they were uh, talking about that, they said that, that it, it was Batman the Animated Series and Kevin Conroy who really most, uh, you know, gave them that idea. And I definitely think that that felt true because I think you're right. The Bru His Bruce always feels like – not that it's a struggle, but that it – like it, it, and it doesn't feel like it's bad acting at all. It feels like the actor is very suited to it, but he's portraying it as someone who is always a little bit uncomfortable in his own skin. And I just always feel like so much more assurance when he is in actually being – when he's uh, acting as Batman instead – because what he's portraying is that Bruce Wayne is someone who's always like a little bit putting on this show for everybody. Even – less so when he's talking with Alfred, but even there, like just he – as Batman is when he's most comfortable. Yeah. I think to some extent there's almost three roles there where there's mm – -hmm. Bruce Wayne, the performance in front of, you know, a, a crowd. There's Batman, which, you know, you could say is, is the true identity. And then there's Bruce Wayne in Wayne Manor where only yeah. Alfred's around. And he's, you know, the question is like, do you have to always pretend you're Bruce when you're like not in the Batcave and then when you're in the Batcave you could be Batman or you know do you have this kind of in between yeah well, I, I was thinking I was, I was thinking that as I was saying it because yeah, like I would like to say that no he's just Batman with Alfred but I think one of the really beautiful parts of that relationship is that Alfred knows that Batman is kind of his core but kind of one of Alfred's main goals throughout the entire show is to allow him to become Bruce again. You know, going to help mm. him out of just being Batman. Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I, you know, I've, there have been a lot of clips that are have been circulating since the news broke that he passed. And also I've, been, I've you know, continued to rewatch the show. Um, and I absolutely agree with both of you that there's sort of those three, like, major categories. But the thing that I think was so... Um, one of the many things that was so powerful about his performance was how sort of he could flow in between them and he was very mutable. It's sort of like, you know, to go back to Christopher Reeve, watching him, you know, straighten up and turn into Superman and then hunch his shoulders and turn into Clark and you see the way he does it. You can hear the way Kevin Conroy does it. And yeah. like, and there was, I was watching the, the two part, um, Ra's al Ghul episode, um, and there's like a scene where he and Robin are like lost in the desert and then they find their way to like a Wayne Enterprises building <laughs> in whatever country that they're in, which is very funny. And they're like change into like their usual, like he's got his turtleneck on and Dick has his little sweater vest. And I'm like, do you just keep those <laughs> in all of your offices? <laughs> um, but he's so they're like talking about like what they're going to do next, but it's Bruce. Like he's wearing civilian clothing, but he's using a voice that's much closer to Batman. But because he's talking mm. to Dick, who's his partner right. and his kid, it's very it's a very warm version of it. They're like joking around with each other. It's not the way that he talks to like Roz and Talia. 
And then one of the um, clips that was circulating on Twitter um, was from Mask of the Phantasm when Bruce breaks down uh, in the rain at his parents' grave. And the person who tweeted it said that Kevin Conroy was particularly proud of that particular scene, which they, they might have been making up. I don't know, but he should have been proud because it's it's amazing. Um, yeah. But he's fully in the Bruce voice, which really surprised me because I would... Because I, I default as well to thinking that the Batman voice is more true to who he is, but it makes sense that he wouldn't talk to his parents that way. Like, right. Yeah. It makes total sense that he's in that higher register that he's because he's so vulnerable in that moment. And it was such a it's such a smart choice as an actor, and it's a choice that shows that he how well he knew and understood the character. Absolutely. And and I think he's using kind of more of like a young Bruce voice there, right? Than mm-hmm. like yeah. fake Bruce. Yes, yeah. It doesn't yeah. have that um that little veneer of I'm a doofus <laughs> that right. he usually yeah, does yeah. as Bruce, which I love. He's so good yeah, at it's Bruce. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think definitely with some of those other portrayals, like Christian Bale and things like that, who I utterly love, yeah, it does feel like almost the portrayal of Bruce is almost to a comical extent. Whereas with Kevin, while I do feel like he – and in Batman the Animated Series and the games and all that, while I do feel like Batman is the core identity, that tension is still always there. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't feel like Alfred is, tr- you know, barking up a, a, the wrong tree or whatever metaphor you want to use for hopelessness. Like, Alfred sees that there is the part of him that still is that side of him and all that. And, and just because we keep mentioning it and I didn't get a chance to before, my own quick Christopher Reeve story uh, – I'm about the same age as Paul. We didn't know each other back then, but um, I got to say very proudly when I was in nursing school or kindergarten that my daddy sued Superman (laughs) Um, because uh, Christopher Reeves owned the top floor of a co-op building. He wanted to do some construction in the building he wanted to do. My father wound up representing the building and so bringing a lawsuit against Christopher Reeves. Um, But but yeah. uh, It's it's just funny that Christopher Reeves keeps coming up because um, they went to Juilliard together. Um, oh yeah. Really? Yeah, I was I have doing no idea. Yeah, I I I wrote um an obituary for Kevin Conroy um for Book Riot which is, is going to go up at some point this week. I'm not sure what day. Um and so I did a little bit of research and I was reading like various like the Warner Brothers press release about his passing. Um but he studied at Juilliard with a whole host of, you know, well-known actors including Christopher Reeve and Robin Williams who was yeah. his roommate. And I just looked at those three names and I was like wow. <laughs> like the, it's the saddest list. Like they were all so mm-hmm. talented, they were all so by all accounts wonderful people and they were all gone far too soon and it's just heartbreaking. Yeah. And there's something really beautiful about that they all went to Juilliard because I'm going to talk about the way this is often conceived and acknowledging that there's some problematic classist ideas in this. But like I think often we think of like, oh, you know, Juilliard or Yale or Dramatary, like that's where like the real actors go, you know, and that those people then go on to do Shakespeare and like the serious acting. And so knowing that these three went on to do, you know, stand-up comedy and then a lot of, like, comedic movies, although they often had a lot of very serious acting in them, and then the other two were primarily superhero actors for most of their life, one on voice, one on screen, it's kind of hilarious, but it's also really telling about how we can often really under undervalue the, the talent that goes into these things. Yeah. And th- that kind of leads me to telling my own story about uh, my connection to this show because it's, it's 100% because of Paul, because... I did watch some episodes of it during high school, but mostly my memory of it is my friends would get stoned and want to watch animated shows, and Batman the Animated Series was the thing we watched while I was waiting for us to watch Darkwing Duck, uh, which, you know... (laughs) So thematically all of a piece. Yeah, Yeah. pretty much so. You know, Darkwing Duck having the the far better theme song, I will say. Um, But I never... It was the thing that my friends liked to laugh at when they were stoned, and, you know, it was like, it's fine, but... I never really took it very seriously. And then when Paul and I were having all these great conversations that like, – the, the conversations that would eventually lead to this podcast um, about Batman and stuff, Paul would keep mentioning, you know, Batman the animated series. And I was like, no, but it's animated. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to get into it. And when I finally sat down and really watched it, of course, I discovered what so many others have, that it's brilliant storytelling and has some of the joy of animated shows to be sure, but is – I mean, there's a lot of animation, especially now, that isn't, like, just for kids. But especially back then, it was kind of unique. Uh, 
particularly for something that came out, you know, weekday afternoons. And I think it was Kevin, so much of that, uh, you know, for all the things we're talking about. And as I was trying to kind of put my arms around, like, what it was that made his influence so powerful, the thing that I kept coming back to, and I want to kind of let each of us talk about maybe one thing about Kevin, Kevin Conroy's performance that we really spoke to them. It's for me, it's the way he interacts with the villains, especially the ones who he has some sympathy for. Um, I think there's a lot of opinions of Batman and a lot of portrayals of him that is the, you know, he, he is vengeance. He is the knight. He's the one who's going to punish the bad guys and make them fearful. And I think there's a lot of that even with Kevin Conroy. But some of my favorite episodes are the one where he's with Grundy or with Ace, who, uh, Paul, oh, you maybe have more to say on that, yeah. that episode. Yeah. Um, or with Harley, you know, like Harley's Bad Day, where it's so clear that he both wants to stop the person doing the bad thing, but he recognizes, like, this person also had some major trauma just like he did. And maybe it's not just because Bruce is a better person that Bruce went one way and they went another, but that there's – a lot of ways that Bruce could have maybe gone their way or they could have gone his way. And he has a sympathy for them. And I just, I've never seen a, a, a portrayal of Batman that expresses that sympathy uh, the way Kevin Conroy did. Yeah. I'm trying to think whether, whether I've seen that that much in other Batmans or I've seen that so much in this Batman that it's mm-hmm. just like how I view Batman, you know? Yeah. But, like, like a lot of other Batmans, I think it's, if it's a pretty woman who he's supposed to be flirting with, then he can have some sympathy for her. Um, but like, you know, Penguin and, and Catwoman both have kind of sympathetic backstories. Uh, we care a lot about Catwoman's, not Penguin's, in the, the Batman Forever movie. Right. I think, I mean, he does have the benefit that it is a TV show. And so he, he has so much more room for those moments. Like, you don't have room for that mm-hmm. in two hours or three hours, as <laughs> we've been getting lately. Um but you do have room for that in 24, 22 minute episodes. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's partially the format, but I think, yeah, I mean, he, so many people, I've seen so many people over the years say Batman, the animated series is Batman is the best Batman. And it's because he has that humanity. He has that warmth. And I, I mean, we keep coming back to Christian Bale who, when he's Batman, it's just like incoherent growling. Like you lose, he's so good at Bruce Wayne and you lose the humanity once he becomes Batman. And that's, I mean, that's the case with a lot of these performers, but you never lose it with Kevin Conroy. You always Mm -hmm. have that, the feeling that like, as Paul was saying, there's a person in there. Um, And I, um, I was actually rereading. So, uh, earlier this year, DC published um, a Pride anthology, which they've done for a few years now. And Kevin Conroy actually wrote a story for it. Um, and yeah. usually these are like superhero, like it, they're superhero comics. It's about like queer characters in the comics, but this was an autobiographical story. And it's amazing. It's it's the best story in the anthology and DC has actually made it free to read. Um, so I That's highly right. recommend going and checking that out. Um, but when he talks about... S- using the Batman voice for the first time, he frames it very much as coming from a place of real human pain and not, it's not there to frighten. It's, it's a cry from the heart. And I think Mm. that again, that, that understanding that Batman is a manifestation of, of pain and not being badass. I mean, he's very badass when he wants to be, but Mm -hmm. But it's not That's like an hard. affectation. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. I, I like that a lot because that is so – in many ways, I think Chris, Michael Keaton was the Batman I saw as a kid and sort of shaped the aesthetic for me. But the Batman who really kind of shaped a lot of my initial ideas of Batman was Christian Bale. And that's where it's very much the sort of ideas that Ra's al Ghul – very much the ideas that Ra's al Ghul teaches him of like, you know, use fear as a weapon, you know, and, and all that. And so I, I really like that different take on it. Yeah, I, I will say just in terms of the Christian Bale Batman, I think in Batman Begins, he had a, a really nice difference between Bruce Wayne and, and Batman. And then in The Dark Knight, he just like doubled down on the like <laughs> really super growly and like, yeah, and also like the audio mixing just was just a, the, 
the bad thing about that movie. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah I think um, it wasn't not just but, growling. There was like a voice modulator. In the <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just way too much, and it. But I. But I agree that it, it was. It was also motivated differently, right? It was. It came from a different part of the character. Or it, it really showed a, a different take on the character, even though. You know, it's like, well, yeah, here's the Batman voice. Here's the Bruce Wayne voice. It's like, OK, but, you know, his Bruce Wayne voice was almost always not almost always, but like had a very much of like a he was putting on an air. And then his Batman voice was also like he was putting on a different air. So I think with the Christian Bale Batman, we very rarely got that really genuine person that that yeah. we got from yeah. Kevin Conroy. I guess very true. So what about from each of you? What's kind of like one thing about Kevin Conroy's performance that you want to lift up? Or it could be like a specific aspect or like a particular episode or moment. I just have a bunch of lines. <laughs> <laughs> sure, if you want to kind of rattle through some of them. The, is there going to be a separate segment where we're talking about favorite moments or? Uh, well, I don't want this to go too long. So this is kind of like going to be the wrap up segment. So yeah, if you wanted to go for it now. <clears throat> okay. So so I'll just, I'll just list a bunch of – first of all, you mentioned – the epilogue episode of the Justice League Unlimited, um, whether it's season two or three, it's like they had a total of 39 episodes. This is the 26th episode. It's the end of this whole Cadmus arc, right? Which was actually the reason that I wanted you to watch the Justice League because it like it gets into like, you know, real world issues through the lens yeah. of like superheroes, right? And um, it was kind of like, you know, Civil War before Civil War. And... It's, um, you know, I, I, there's so many great lines throughout that whole arc, um, where, you know, early on, there's like, they're fighting all these nanobots and, and Batman's in the Batwing and the Batwing gets destroyed by the nanobots and he bails out, but he like doesn't have a parachute. And yes, he's like, yes. uh, he's like, if somebody could catch me, I can't fly at all <laughs> and just the deli like that's one of my favorite lines and he's so it's unflappable yeah. when he says it he's like well i'm <laughs> going to die but i'm not going to get worked up over it <laughs> exactly it's just like so matter of fact but also such a dramatic moment right and then i think wonder woman saves him um and uh there's another i mean the whole Batman and Wonder Woman dynamic throughout the Justice League series, I think is just fantastic. And there's, there's, there's so many moments. Um, there's one time when they're, they're hiding, but in, in person. So he's, you know, Bruce Wayne and, and she's Diana, I guess. And, um, she kisses him to like, you know, sort of so somebody doesn't notice that mm -hmm. they're who they are and she's like you know i'm sorry and he's like don't be <laughs> like <laughs> just like the way he says it just it's, it's just <laughs> it's so different from what we saw in the rest of the justice league because we don't get much bruce in the justice league right it's mostly batman there i don't get too much into like romantic pairings of different characters but one of the ones i am fairly diehard for is bruce diana and i and yeah. so much of it is because of his interact like that Kevin Conroy's interactions with her, and it just like nope. Any any of the pairing for either of them, nope. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I I feel you on that. Um, I, and then entirely because of the Justice League series. Oh yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and then later in in the um the Cadmus arc, there's there's a spot where he's talking to, um, Amanda Waller, um, portrayed fantastically by uh CCH Pounder, right, and, mm -hmm. um. And he's talking about Lex, you know, not just wanting to be president. And she's like, she's like, he wants to be president. That's enough power for anyone. And he's just like, almost anyone. <laughs> and it's like, it's a great line and it's just delivered perfectly, you know. And that whole episode, there's like a thing where they're, they, all the Justice League wants to like turn themselves into the government. And he's like, he's just like, you know, he, he's like, if, if you're, you know, whatever, like clear your own name, don't sit on the sidelines and wait for someone else to do it. And they're like, well, you have to, you know, we voted, you have to come along. He's like, I'm just a part timer. Remember Batman out. <laughs> Yeah, some of the best stuff of his, we've talked most about the animated series, but in the Justice League, the way he's able to portray that he's sort of like, 
he's on the same side, but not the same team of the Justice League. Right. He's willing to show up, but yeah. he's not. But he he's never going to drink the Kool Aid. It's like you still like him. Like when he does that in the comics, I'm like, shut up, then leave. I don't need you. But like <laughs> Kevin Conroy's Batman, I'm like, all right. You knucklehead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it just works within the, the context of the show, you know, yeah. and because it's it's delivered like, I don't know, when you're reading a comic, you can kind of, I mean, maybe you hear Kevin Conroy's voice when you read Batman, you know, I'm I'm sure I do. But, it, you know, it depends on how it's written. Sometimes it's written in a way where it's like, oh, this, no, <laughs> this isn't, you know, this isn't that Batman. And, um you know, but when when you when you see an animated show, you're you're hearing the voice, right? And yeah. how the line is delivered can make such a difference in terms of uh, how the line is felt. And um, I guess I'll just, in terms of uh, th- these lines, there's the entire epilogue episode of of the Justice League Unlimited series, which is just like. I kind of don't want to go over the whole thing again. I, I basically narrated the episode to my mom the other night on the phone while, like, mm. walking out in the cold and <laughs> at night. It felt appropriate. Um, and, like, I was, like, tearing up. You know, it's, like, hard to actually explain, like, everything that happens in the episode because – and basically it's just, you know, this supervillain is, like, doing supervillain stuff but she's about to have an aneurysm and – you know, Amanda Waller is like, well, I need you to go in and she'll trust you and, and then go ahead and kill her. And he's like, yeah, OK, I'll do that. Uh, but like he has no intention of doing that, you know, and he ends up just like asking her, like, could you know, could you could you stop it? <laughs> like with the, you know, and like she does, you know, and I think because, you know, they have a they have a real connection there in that moment. And, you know, and she asks if he'll like stay with her and he does. And he like yeah. holds her hand sitting on a swing. You know, important to this, I think, is that like not only is she a supervillain, she's also like what a ten. She's a kid. Yeah, I don't know how old she actually is, but yeah, she's a kid. You know, and and she's like, you know, basically she had this power, and and Cadmus or some governmental agency tried to turn her into a weapon, and she's like, they got their weapon. You know, I got robbed of my childhood. And then, you know, Batman's like, I I know what that's like, and she's like, you do, don't you? Because you know, she can read minds, and. Like, you know, and then they're just sitting there on swings, you know, so it's like she, you know, they're kind of like two kids, you know, where it's like a part of Bruce is always that eight year old boy who just saw his parents murdered. And um, it's it's just a, a beautiful moment and terribly sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny, like every line that you've said, I mean, it's been years since I watched Justice League. That's why, like, I started this, you know. DCAU rewatch, but I'm still in season one of Batman because it's 65 episodes long. (laughs) So many Um, episodes. But every single line you've said, I like, I can remember exactly the cadence or exactly how he said it. Like, it's just, yeah, yeah, like engraved on my brain. Yeah, it's their iconic lines delivered iconically. Like, Mm -hmm. it just, and it, the way he does it, I think. It feels effortless, you know, which isn't to say that it was, but yeah. sometimes someone's like giving some big impassioned speech and it feels like it feels like acting, you know, and mm-hmm. granted, we've already talked about sometimes the character is acting and he gets that across as well. But it just it I mean, I, I think great acting is like when you it doesn't feel like acting. It just feels like the person there's a person there and you you feel how they think and and how they feel and it just it just all comes across yeah one one just take quick thing that also makes me think of in terms of just the the acting range is batman beyond oh which, yes where mm-hmm. kevin is now, now playing yeah. the same character but a just 30 years older which changes the voice but also it's a it's a more cynical batman in some ways it's a yeah. batman who has really kind of like lost some of his like under like he who's really kind of suffering under the weight of everything he's been dealing with and is slowly brought back to an understanding by this younger version of himself um and it's just it's just an amazing like i was definitely very shocked when i realized it was the same voice actor Mm -hmm. oh really is like it's very tied to it but it's just like just for that vocal talent i wouldn't have thought it yeah uh just what 
what about from you? One kind of either a couple favorite moments or lines or just one last aspect of the portrayal. I mean, we we definitely hit a bunch of them. The scene in Mask of the Phantasm, the um, Paul had a few of them. The all of all of epilogue, <laughs> um, the bit in um, when he says to Harley, "I had a bad day too." Like <laughs> so good, yeah. Um, yeah. But. My number one, and I remember the very first time, like, I remember when this episode aired, is the uh, JLU episode in the first season, This Little Piggy, um, oh, when he yes. sings. Oh, because, wow. Because uh, Wonder Woman has been transformed into a pig by Cersei, and the <laughs> only way that he can get her to, tur- like, turn back into herself is by singing in Cersei's nightclub, and... Like, I, again, I remember when this episode aired and I remember everybody losing their minds because we didn't know Kevin Conroy could sing. And he has a beautiful singing voice. And like, of course, this, yeah. like I'm the musical theater person. Like, of course, I lost my mind at this. But it was just and like the minute he started singing, it was like, well, of course, Batman would have a beautiful singing voice. He trained to be the best at everything. <laughs> like, right, the right. minute he did it, yeah. it made sense and it was logical. And it's just like, l- literally, I will sometimes just pull up that clip and listen to it, even though it's like 30 seconds of a song and not the full thing. And I wish mm-hmm. they'd recorded the full thing. Because oh, that would be gorgeous. so good. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that that scene, that whole episode is amazing. It's so good. That whole, The so first good. season of that, sh- uh, well, no, the whole sh- all of these shows are good. I think that's yeah. the moral of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it also lets me tie into what – I'm the host. I get to do this. I'll do the one last thing again. Um, but, like, you were talking, Paul, about him talking to um, Amanda Waller. And, and th- to me, that's one of the best things in the Justice League uh, show shows is that I think a big part of why I am – Amanda Waller is one of my favorite characters in animation and why – to some extent, I agree with her some of the time, is because to some extent Batman agrees with her, and mm. I've never seen that anywhere except in those animated shows where sometimes like the two of them are the ones who are like, yeah, this Superman guy who's always going to be good and right, we can have no limitations on because he'll always do the right thing. Do you buy it? No. Do you buy it? No. Like just the way that they connect sometimes. Even though often they're working across purposes, but they still like they're both having that suspicion. And I just I his Kevin Conroy's acting in that is a lot of why it like I think it's sort of like if Batman can see some val validity in her point of view, so can I. Yeah, I mean there's a whole thing where he's like, they're right to be afraid of us, you know? And yeah. and you know, Superman's like trying to make a joke. He's like, I took a bullet for you, Clark, or whatever. Like he literally <laughs> just like attached the bat wing to like a nuclear weapon or something. I don't know. Like somehow didn't quite totally get blown up. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you both so much. This has always been uh, it's a mini episode, and we are going to be under 35 minutes or so, but I'm so glad both of you could be a part of this. Uh, Jess, you mentioned a couple things you're doing. We're going to have links in the show notes to the obituary that you're writing, as well as to or that you've already written. We're going to have links in the show notes to the obituary, uh, Kevin, that you wrote, as well as I'm going to have a link to that um, comic that you mentioned that Kevin wrote. Uh, but is there anyone else else? Is there anything else people should know about what you're doing these days? Um, yeah, it's pretty much all over on Book Riot. Um, uh, technically, I'm at Jess Plummer on Twitter, but who knows if Twitter will still be standing by the time this airs. Um, so yeah, I'd stick with Book Riot. Great. I'll also say that um, Jess and I will be having uh, another conversation in about 10 minutes, so you'll probably hear it before you hear this, on another part of the DC Universe that is just so awash with deep ethical questions and brilliant portrayals, and I wish you could see the sarcasm on my face because I'm talking about Black Adam. (laughs) So if you want to hear us talk about Black Adam, probably a little less tears, but but have still some great things to say, check that out also on this podcast. Uh, Paul. The Zen Madman is still hibernating in the Zen cave doing Zen poker things and will be emerging like a butterfly in January with new content? Something like that, yes. Okay. Awesome. awesome. I am literally so, sitting in a in a dark room with all the lights out and podcasting, which I don't know. It, it feels <laughs> like very both very Batman and, and also like very voice actor, you know? So I, I feel a deep connection right now to Yeah, um, I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, thank you both so much to all of our audience. Would love to hear from you. Um, it's always true, but especially this. What are some of your favorite Kevin Conroy moments? Are there episodes that you've been like inspired to go back and watch? 
are you? I mean, it, this is a show we're talking about that was mostly big in the '90s and early 2000s. I'm guessing there's some of you who maybe haven't seen it or haven't seen many of his portrayals. Uh, what's your take on this? How, how does his portrayal compare to others? Or what have you heard about it before? Anything you want to tell us, go to theethicalpanda.com. Send us your thoughts. Send us your ideas. You can find us on Facebook, email, Twitter, all the different places that people are. Well, Twitter may be in a little while. Who knows? But certainly you can email us. Find us on Facebook. Anything you want. On behalf of myself, Paul, Jessica, thank you so much. Uh, and in honor of Kevin Conroy, thank you to all of you for um, listening in. And I just, you know, thank you to Kevin for all the amazing content uh, he gave us. Thank you all and have a good night. And second, the voice kept calling me Bruce in my mind. That's not what I call myself. <laughs> <laughs>